All right. Second attempt. I don't know what the hell's going on with my camera lately, guys. It keeps stopping the recording prematurely before I even press the stop button. <laughs> if anyone knows, let me know down below. I've got a Sony A6400. It just seems to choose when it pleases, whenever it pleases to stop recording, even if I don't intend on it. But it's Friday, 2nd of February. And I suppose this, this video is not really like a day in the life, but rather just snippets throughout the, I suppose, tail end of my day, as well as my training session later tonight, which I'll be getting done and I'll include in this video. But yeah, I'll just finish my last check-in for the day. It's Friday, so last check-in day of the week. Uh, as you would know if you've watched my previous videos, my check-in days are as follows. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday being a slightly shorter day at the minute. It always was my longer day historically, but a little bit shorter as of late. But today it was quite long because I have a couple of people kicking off contest preps next week. So I had to get some additional work done, nutrition plans out to them for, for this coming week, that sort of thing. And just some additional information in regards to how to approach check-ins moving forward, that sort of thing. So there are some slight changes and differences in a contest prep setting as opposed to in an off-season setting. And I'd just like to make those really clear and communicate those so my, my athletes know what the hell is going on. But with that said, yeah, one of them's a drug-free athlete first time competitor, it's gonna be their first contest prep. They're quite excited, they're quite eager to do it and I'm quite excited to see how it goes. And I think if you're passionate about what you do, if you're a coach that's passionate about coaching, the whole prep process is just as exciting for you as it is for the athlete. And that's very much the case in, in my instance this week. I'm really excited for the couple of people starting prep next week. Now, in terms of the fact that they're drug free, obviously because of that, they're starting quite far out. I like to start most natural competitors at least, depending on their, their gender, their, uh, I suppose, training age, training experience, that sort of thing, their own propensity to be able to put tissue on, lose body fat, that sort of thing, because we're all slightly different genetically. Anywhere between like 25 to 35 weeks, I find is usually a suitable time frame for most drug-free individuals. There's obviously outliers on either end of that, that range, but I find generally speaking, that's probably a pretty reasonable, broad, reference range to kind of state. Uh, so yeah, starting out uh, next week, they're quite excited. I'm, I'm really excited, like I said. And and yeah, aside from that, nothing much is going on, but that obviously did cause my work day today to kind of drag out a little bit longer than usual. Normally I'd finish at about 4 p.m., but today I finished at about 5 p.m. And it's about, like I said, oh, it's more than half five now. It's about 20 to six in the evening. So I finished at about five, went downstairs because I'm in a condo, two level condo, and I started cooking my ground chicken breast. I just had a few pound, I think it was like, no, four pound of chicken breast to cook up. So I cooked up two pound, I'll go down and cook the other two pound in a minute. Already cooked the rice, that's in the rice cooker. We just kind of like constantly top that up here and, and leave it on and just scoop it out as needed. Never really, it's never really off or empty to be honest. It's, as soon as it's empty, it's cleaned out and filled back up and put back on. So. Yeah, it's just got rice in it around the clock, but I'll show you guys that in a minute when, when I go back downstairs. I hung out the laundry, that sort of thing. I just did some general chores after I finished work today, but yeah, that's pretty much how the day's been. Uh, I mean, my, my days typically follow the same format every single day. I wake up a little bit later over here in Thailand since I moved here in regards to like how early I'd wake up in Australia. I used to wake up very early back in Australia. Uh, part of that was because my fiance's schedule kind of, uh, I suppose, permitted that we should just wake up earlier, go to bed earlier. But over here, I've been waking up later and then going to bed later. So wake up, do my fasted cardio after I have my coffee. I do my daily steps just so I'll have that box off for the day. There's no kind of advantage at doing your daily steps first thing in the morning. And if you have the ability, you're better off doing your daily steps in small chunks throughout the day and just meeting a total at the end of the day by breaking it up into smaller segments. But if you're like me and you're about efficiency, you have like a desk job, that sort of thing like I do, where I don't really get to get off my ass all day a lot of the time, I like to just get them all boxed off early in the morning so that way it's just out of the way. So I'll do my faster cardio and I'll just basically back to back, just back it up with my daily steps, get 10K steps out of the way for the day, 30 minutes of faster cardio, I come back home, shower, uh, basically have breakfast or meal one, whatever you wanna call it, dive into work and just start working through the day and that's pretty much it. So that's what I did today. Uh, I didn't really have any breaks because I slept, my th uh, fuck, I slept through my alarm today. Uh, so 
I was running a little bit behind the eight ball, but nonetheless, I got everything done. I just had to skip my daily breaks throughout my work blocks, and that allowed me to finish on time with when I was going to finish, had I have woken up on time. But tonight I've got my second push session. And normally, I know you'd probably be saying if you've watched my previous videos, Friday's pool day. Normally, I do my second pool session of the week on Friday. And although it's true, I did have an unplanned rest day yesterday, so that's kind of just pushed things back a little bit. That's why there's no video for Thursday this week. So today I'll be doing yesterday's session, and then tomorrow I'll be doing today's session. Um, and then uh, Sunday I'll be doing Saturday's session, yeah. One change that I have made to training, which I haven't mentioned yet, I did already obviously mention that I'm no longer doing a dedicated arms day. I'm just doing uh, push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, rest, repeat. So six days on, one day off, but just a push, pull, legs twice a week. Whereas before it was a little bit different. It was like a chest, side delt, back, rear delt, arms. And then it was like a, a, it was like a, a push and then like a, a pull plus legs. It was pretty full on. Uh, that sec second last, no, not second last session, that last session of the week used to really mess me up recovery wise. And so I decided to switch to a uh, legs push pull, or a push pull legs, push pull legs, rest, repeat protocol. But now, fuck, I cannot speak English today. I meant to say paradigm, not protocol. Uh, but now I've changed it a little bit. I've just changed the session order. So instead of doing push, pull legs, push, pull legs, rest, repeat, I'm doing push legs, pull, push legs, pull, rest, repeat. And just having that little bit of additional rest between upper body sessions just allows for better recovery around the clock throughout the entire week. So that's why I've done it. It's not necessary for everybody, but if you notice a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to your rate of recovery throughout your week of training and you're doing that, you have your upper body sessions back to back, you know, legs push, pull, split, and then your leg session at the end. Try sandwiching the leg session between the two upper body focus sessions. So you're doing like either pull legs push or push legs pull as opposed to push pull legs or pull push legs. I, I think it does make a bit of a difference. So that's what I've done. But without wasting too much more time and without boring you to death because it's probably been pretty damn boring watching me just sit here and chat and dribble shit, I'll take the camera downstairs. I'll show you guys the, the ground chicken rest on prepping and whatnot. And I'll, I'll also unbox a package I got delivered today from my sponsor, Innerdose. And with that said, guys, shameless plug, if you do want to pick up some Innerdose supplements, if you're in Australia, New Zealand, or overseas somewhere else, and you don't mind paying the international shipping, then head down to the URL in the description box down below. Uh, use code statue at checkout to save yourself 10% off and also help me out in the process. And I really do appreciate any support, guys. Uh, it means a lot. And yeah, let's basically dive into it. All right, so this is the first batch of ground chicken breast. I'll get the uh, second batch out and I'll start cooking that. All right. I don't know if that was quite a pound that I cooked before. So, a bit over, might have been a bit over a pound, like a pound and a half, one and a half pounds. But what I like to do guys, I don't know if anybody else does this, but instead of using actual containers to store the meat in the fridge. I just use uh, these slider bags. It's kind of like a Ziploc bag, but with a sliding top instead of a uh, top that you kind of like pinch together and, and lock together. And the reason I like this, guys, is it just takes up like less volume and space in your fridge. When you're eating the large amounts of, fuck, what the hell's going on? Ugh. It's a pet peeve of mine. Microwave not being shut and not being turned off. Um, so when you eat the like quantities of food that we do, obviously as bodybuilders, it takes up a lot of space. And if you don't have a abnormally large fridge, which not of all of us are blessed with, especially if we're living abroad and not in our usual house. Like I mean, back in Australia we had a bit of a bigger fridge, but over here it's a little bit smaller. If you don't have a large fridge, you've got to be a little bit more efficient with your space and the way you utilize it. So this is one little hack. It's one thing I used to do too when I lived in a, a share house when I was at uni. I, because uh, we had to share a fridge between like four of us, I'd cook my chicken and whatever other meat I'd be eating and I'd place it in plastic bags like that. 
and just once you kind of fill it up, just scrunch the air out, zip the bag up, and voila. Like, if you were to put that in a container, it would just take up a inconveniently large amount of space relative to that, when that takes up. Now we'll just cook this second batch. And I don't know if anybody else does this, I don't use oil when I cook my meat. I just don't think it's necessary. It's very rare that, even with chicken breast, that it'll be fat free. Once you start cooking it, a little bit of fat will seep out of the meat and it will help assist in the cooking process. So it's one little way you can prevent fucking up your nutrition too. Because a lot of people will use oil to cook their food and they won't account for the calories coming from that. Now, if you're in the off season, you're not in a contest prep or a fat loss phase, it's not a big deal, but every little thing counts when you're in a contest prep. And I mean, when you're a bodybuilder and you're taking things seriously, it pays to be this kind of, I suppose, anal about your cooking and your nutrition in the off season as you are in contest prep. As long as it's not to the point where you're getting burnout from it. But if you're a little bit autistic, well, not a little bit, I'm, I am autistic, I'm on the spectrum, I got diagnosed with it. If you're autistic like me, then being more dialed in the off season isn't necessarily a bad thing, it doesn't really mentally drain you. If anything, it kind of charges you up. You feel a little bit more on, on point with things. So, yeah, I'll wait for that to start cooking. I won't show you guys the whole thing, but basically what I was saying about the oil thing is if you're in a dieting phase and using spray oil to cook your meats and stuff, one, it's not necessary, and two, it's adding additional calories that you're most likely not accounting for. So just keep that in mind. If you use oil, there's nothing wrong with it. Just be mindful of the fact that you are using it. And if it's a, a new variable, if it's not something that you've done your entire life, like all your entire fitness journey, like if you just started recently adding oil to the pan to cook and you've noticed recently you've hit a bit of a plateau, say you recently had calories adjusted, but you started suddenly adding oil to the pan to cook your meat, then you could be offsetting that deficit a little bit, depending on how many times a day you're cooking your meals. If you're cooking your meals fresh every single time you eat a meal, the oil that you add to the pan to cook that food can add up quite significantly. If you're prepping your food in advance, it's not going to really make that much of a difference. It'll be like a, a drop in the ocean. It's going to be pretty insignificant. But if you're an online coach or if you have a, a job where you're sitting down at home and say you, you work remote and you are able to and you do cook every meal to eat, just be mindful. Don't, you don't have to avoid it, but being mindful of the impact that having oil on the pan when you cook the meat for every single meal throughout the day can have on your total calorie intake for the day. Because it can add up. Again, I'm not saying don't do it, just, just be aware of it, guys. But I'll, I'll show you when it's done. This is one thing I actually really do like about bodybuilding is just having a, a fresh, ready-to-go rice cooker full of rice around the clock. Alrighty. Why don't we do this in a dose package unboxing now, seeing as the chicken's going to take a while to cook. And I'm not about wasting time, I'm about efficiency, getting shit done as efficiently as possible. So one pro tip guys, always make sure you cut towards yourself. It's the safest way to open a parcel. Not really, don't do that. And if you do, you didn't hear it from me. It's actually probably the worst way to open a parcel. Always cut away from yourself, kids. Always cut away from yourself. So, that, I should, I should probably take this invoice off, that'll be easier. These post, like international post invoices always annoy me. They're a real pain in the ass to take off. Like you can never take it off smoothly. You always have to <coughs> rip it and yeah, it's just it's a royal mess. So just need to do that so I can get to the top of the parcel here. Cut the box open. All right. Did not, thank God I did not cut the contents of the box. So I did speak to Sam, uh, the, the owner of Innerdose the other day, the other week, I should say actually, a week ago now. Shit. And I just said to him, look bro, I love wearing the shirts, but they're too damn thick over here and they're too small. Like the, the 3XL is turning into a bit of a, a crop top on me. And, <laughs> and like a, what would you call it, like a, a compression crop top or like a, 
a muscle crop top, like a tight shirt, but it's too short as well. Uh, and that were the 3XLs. So he sent me through a couple of uh, the double XL from a different, uh, different make, which then might be getting some new shirts through eventually. These were some that he got some original prototypes through. He likes the shirts themselves, but the actual print and the size of the logo are a little bit better on the ones that they currently sell. Um, the shirts that like Inadose sell at the moment, they're fantastic shirts. Like, don't get me wrong, I love them, but in Thailand, it's too hot to wear thick cotton. Like, you will sweat like a priest at an all boys school. Uh, so, yeah. He sent me through these older ones, which I'm excited to wear. They already feel a lot thinner and just a little bit bigger. So, I'm, I'm pretty stoked to do that. Pretty stoked to wear those. Exact same logo, same prints as the uh, current ones on the website. They're just a little bit thinner and a little bit baggier, which is going to be better for me in this real hot weather. And also the fact that I've outgrown the 3XLs. Because uh, typically in Australia, I didn't tell Sam this, but in Australia before I left, my average shirt size was a 5XL in Australia. So trying to wear a 3XL when I'm already bigger than what I was in Australia is probably a little bit of a lost cause. Got some kidney support, digest aid. some heart and some liver. You probably already knew that though because the entire range at the minute currently consists of four products. It is gonna be expanding and growing. Don't you worry about that. There's plenty of supplements in the works. Uh, I know for a fact because I've spoken to Sam about it and yeah, some exciting supplements that are in the works and will be coming out very soon, no doubt. Uh, one of them being an essential greens product, a, a chocolate flavored essential greens, which I'm absolutely looking forward to because I was a big fan of, uh, what was it, Revive's um, Essential Greens product. It was like an Essential Greens powder, chocolate flavored. And I was having it throughout my last contest prep and I absolutely loved it. Helped a lot with digestion as well because it had some fiber and, and whatnot in it. I used to put a little bit of extra glutamine in there too just to help with digestion. But yeah, I'm really excited to try the Inodose one when it comes out. So I'll keep you guys in the loop with when that happens so you guys can get your hands on it as soon as it drops. But yeah, they're the products. So better get back to that chicken because it smells like it's starting to fucking burn. And I hate burnt meat. So I'm back upstairs now, finished prepping that second batch of chicken. I didn't show you, but it literally looks the same as the first batch, which I did show you, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm about to dive into this meal here, which is 150 grams of cooked chicken breast, ground chicken breast. 350 grams of basmati rice cooked weight as well, 50 grams of pickled beetroot and 30 grams of kimchi. Then I've just got a shitload of black pepper on here because I love black pepper. No sauces, uh, I've got two grams of salt. I'm using pink Himalayan salt, but it really doesn't matter which salt you use. At the end of the day, people try harp on about pink salt being better because it has higher vitamins and minerals, higher vitamin mineral content in comparison to say white sea salt, but at the end of the day, you're having salt for the sodium content, not for the vitamins and minerals. That's what you eat vegetables, that's what you eat red meats for, that's what you eat eggs for, that's where you get your micronutrition. You don't get it from fucking salt. And if you were to rely on salt for your micronutrient intake, you would be having a ridiculously high intake of salt, way, way beyond the realms of what is, I suppose, advisable for anybody to have, to be honest. But I'll show you the uh, close up. So that's what it looks like. So I'll eat this. I'll reply to some emails. I still have a few emails to get back to and then I'll probably let this digest a little bit more, have a snack if I have the time and then go train. If not, I'll just train on this and I'll get some intra carbs. I'll get some Gatorade to have intra workout. But yeah, I'll see you guys shortly, no doubt. <laughs> Okie doke. Finally at the gym. It's half past seven. I don't know if the screen on my phone was too bright for you to see that, but it's about 7 30 at night. Finally at the gym. About to do my push session. I didn't have another meal after that one that I showed you on the camera earlier. Just because if I did, I'd have to wait another 60 to 90 minutes before I headed to the gym. And I didn't want to leave it out late. If I did that, if I had another meal, I wouldn't be getting to the gym and starting my training until about nine o'clock at night. And the gym closes at 11, so it's cutting it close. And then also on top of that, just abnormally late to, to train, like it's later than you'd want to train if you had any say in it. So I just 
basically packed my bag, went to the gym. So we've got a Gatorade, 30 carbs for intra. I'll have one Rice Krispie treat, which is like another 17 carbs. I won't have two though, because there's two grams of fat per bar, and so if I have two, that's four grams of fat. I don't really want to have four grams of fat right before I train. But, just so you know what's on the agenda tonight, I mean, you'd, you'd know if you watched last week's second push session. We got tricep press downs, overhead extensions, dip, incline press, and flies. So that's pretty much what we're doing. So there are four sets of press downs, four sets of overhead extension, both of my rep match exercises, so my rep match sets for both of those exercises then into dips, incline press, and flies. All the chest work for the most part, just straight sets. I do do some my rep match set stuff on chest training earlier in the week in my first push session, but this one's more just straight sets. Actually, dips are my rep match, sorry. So dips are my rep match sets, and then just straight sets for incline press and flies. So that's what I'm doing, guys. Else to say, so I'll just end the video here, guys. All right, so, a little warm up set, then I'll dive into the first working set, which will be a quite heavier than last week because I believe I hit, yeah, four sets of 15 at plate number 11. So, it'll be plate number 12 today for the working weight, but I'll just sort of warm up quickly at like plate number 8. Punch out probably like eight reps or so. Nothing crazy, just to get a little bit of blood flow directed to the target muscle before I hit the working sets. <clears throat> I'll just say these shirts are actually really comfortable. They breathe a lot better than the other ones. So I'm gonna be able to actually wear these, which is good. I've been a bit disappointed lately that I haven't been able to rep in the barracks in the gym because the other ones are just too thick and, and I suppose sweat inducing. Fine. Always feel good. I actually think that having that, I suppose, off plan forced rest day yesterday did me a, a world of good. I'd say that my elbows probably wouldn't feel as good as they do right now if I had have done this session yesterday as originally scheduled. So I'm glad that I, I made the call, the last minute call, to just give it a miss and, and have a rest day yesterday. But yeah, set number one. Reps, I don't know how many I'll get, but I'll get him, get him, I've got it, fuck. I've got to get a minimum of 10 reps. And then whatever reps I get on this first set, this straight set, I've got to rep match all the, uh, the following sets, all the remaining sets. Okay. Twelve reps is the target. Only downside about these shirts are the sleeves are a little bit too tight for my liking. 
either like a very kind of like very baggy sleeve or no sleeves at all. matches yet or well, no rest pauses yet I should say but I definitely think I'm gonna have to do a rest pause on that third set coming up that was hard So one final set of these to go. Now, the reason I like my rep match sets for arms is because out of all your body parts, so depending on which body part it is, some require more volume to grow than others. And my rep match sets are, and also rest pause sets, are kind of a way of like cheating the system, so to speak. You can get more total effective reps in per set. And so you can basically do, say, three my rep match sets and get the same amount of stimulus for muscle growth as say five or six straight sets. And that's just gonna allow you to basically be a lot more efficient with your time in the gym, not have to fuck around in the gym like a lot of the morons here tonight and actually get your, your session done in a reasonable time frame. So it's one thing I like about them. And you get less fatigue. Like for the amount of stimulus you get, the amount of additional stimulus you get, you're less, you get less total fatigue. So it's kind of like a, uh, so it's a win-win either way you look at it.
13, yeah, 13 reps on this last week. Same weight, same seat setting. Let's aim for 14. Oh. 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 Now you should get 14. That was a hard 14, so I'll probably have to have some sort of a rest pause in this second set. change keep you guys engaged in the video Definitely have to do two classes to get this in. Aim for three and then two. See how we go with that. Say this before I do the last two reps. I'm fully aware that I'm not fully extending or locking out on each rep, but that's deliberate. I'm trying to really focus on the stretch with this tricep exercise. The press downs before, I was focusing a lot more on the peak contraction. You don't have to go like with each exercise, you don't have to do like a full stretch or a full contraction. You can vary it up. Some exercises you can do one, others you can do the other. 
Uy. Final second. Oof. 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 Yeah, last week I got, I believe, 13 reps at 220. Three sets of 13 at 210 pounds, so I'll aim for 14 today. See how that goes. I'm feeling optimistic. Let's say that, optimistic. Just because I had that extra rest yesterday that I don't normally have between my, well, now my pull session and my push session. Got to put the weight up. I thought that felt light. <laughs> there we go. One rope to go.
Given last week, went so well with 180 pound, I'm gonna go 230 today. Uh, it's a pretty big jump, like a 50 pound jump. It's not anything kind of conservative, but I was at the top end of the rep range last week with the 180, so I'll just aim for minimum reps, eight reps per set. If I get more, great. If I don't, it's not a big deal. And I'll slowly just progressively, linearly build that up over time. Yeah. Don't need to really warm up. I feel quite warm from those dips because they were like a chest bias dip anyway, so. I'll just dive straight into the first working set. Because this isn't a new movement or anything. I've been doing this movement for quite a few training blocks, so my body's pretty acclimated to the actual loading pattern of it. So there's no real, in my opinion, risk, knock on wood, without doing a, a warm-up set for this, given that fact. <sighs> If I go in close to failure on that set, there's no way in hell I'll be getting made on the next couple of sets. So I called it there just to be safe and make sure I at least hit the minimum benchmark requirements for every working set. Right. Second set. Second set for some reason always feels better. Even if I do a warm up set, for some reason the first set never feels as good. Probably just psychological more than anything, to be honest or neurological, I should say, but yeah, whatever it is, it's just an observation, something I've noticed. Oh. <laughs> 
On the flies now. All right, second set. Get a one rep PB on that one. That was that was nice. Final set, and then it's home time. Ooh. Yeah, I'm skipping side dogs again. <laughs> Sue me. Mm. 
Jesus. Chest on. Could have kept going, but they just would have been partials. So I stopped there. I'll try to clean it up on the next set though, because I feel like some of those reps were a little bit sloppy and inconsistent. Oh. My rep match sets. So 13 on the first one, 13 on all of these remaining sets. Oh. more I think about it, the more I actually want to punch myself for even considering skipping side delts again. Spent so many years trying to actually build some shoulders, because genetically I had like no shoulders whatsoever. And to just throw that all away, because I just feel a little bit lazy. But that'd be a bit of a, bit of a uh, disappointment. So, one's it to go. So back home from the gym now. I've already had my post-workout meal and now it's my next meal. And because I skipped, I didn't skip a meal, I missed a meal earlier in the day. I've got one meal to play catch up on. So that's what this is. It's pretty much a repeat of what I had pre-training. So same quantities, like same everything. So there's no point in me kind of mentioning anything. I just put a little bit of uh, South Carolina mustard on top for some flavour but that's pretty much it identical ingredients and quantities as per the other meal that I already showed 
aside from that. So yeah, I'll eat this and then I'll dive into those few emails that I didn't get to get around to before I went to the gym to train. And then it'll just be basically chilling, relaxing until bedtime. So hope you enjoyed the video guys. Subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to, that is. And I'll see you in the next video.